Aegon now ruled two of the Seven Kingdoms, but he would no longer be able to take the rest piecemeal. For the first time in thousands of years, the kings put aside their squabbles and joined forces against the common enemy. My ancestor, King Loren of House Lannister, was head of the wealthiest family in the Seven Kingdoms. When King Loren joined his forces to Mern of House Gardner, King of the Reach, they had the mightiest army in history, a so-called Iron Fist, to break the would-be conqueror. But while an Iron Fist can smash a man's face in battle, you'd look silly hunting birds or beasts with it. And Aegon had a creature that was both. The kings had never even seen a dragon, let alone fought one. They had fought each other for thousands of years, and victory always went to the larger army. Surely, a force five times that of Aegon's could manage one dragon. But Aegon arrived with three. Still, the Lannisters and Gardeners hoped for victory. The battlefield they chose was a wide plain with firm ground and clear skies, perfect for archers and mounted cavalry. But neither of the kings spared a thought for why the ground was firm. There had been no rain for a fortnight, which meant all the wheat and grass on it were bone dry. Perfect for dragons. At first, the kings looked like they would emerge victorious. When the horn blew for battle, their armies swept around Aegon's flanks, and there are iron fists of mounted knights smashed through his center before the dragons could even enter the fray. But then, Aegon and his sisters took flight and unleashed their dragons, not on the soldiers, but on the dry fields all around them. The iron fist unclenched and became a hand outstretched for mercy. As Aegon promised, he had none. More than 4,000 men died in the fires, another thousand escaping them. Tens of thousands returned home as monsters, burned and scarred beyond recognition. House Gardner never returned at all. The field of fire, as the singers call it, claimed the last of the garden line, and House Tyrell rose in their stead as Lords of the Reach and Wardens of the South. As for my illustrious ancestor, when King Lawrence saw the battle was lost, he rode through a wall of flame and smoke to safety, or at least to a heroic capture a day later, where he laid his sword before Aegon and knelt. Aegon, true to his word, spared him and confirmed House Lannister as Lords of Casterly Rock and Wardens of the West. Why wouldn't he? A Lannister always pays his debts, and now we owed our lives to the crown. That was worth centuries of subservience, at least. Besides, Aegon had a fetish for collecting swords, not heads. He added Lawrence to the pile his men had retrieved from the field of fire and sent them back to the Aegon Forge.